In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an anamorphic project in DaVinci Resolve. There's just a couple things you need to prepare before you get into Resolve. Um, and I'll walk you through all of the different factors that you need to consider. It's not really that complicated. There's a couple different anamorphic aspect ratios, but I'm gonna stick with the most common one that you'll run across, the ones that most movies that were shot anamorphically are displayed in, and that's 239 to one. Sometimes we refer to as 240 to one, and also sometimes referred to as scope. Also keep in mind, the results that you get with anamorphic lenses are dependent on several factors. Number one would be the type of anamorphic lens you have and the stretch factor of that lens, whether it's 1.33 times, 1.6, 1.8, or two. The other factor is the aspect ratio of the sensor of your camera. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you footage from the A7S III and the Vazen 50 millimeter 1.8 times anamorphic. And that's an interesting combo because it is a full frame anamorphic lens, but the Sony a7S III does not have an open gate mode, so I had to shoot the full 16 by nine aspect ratio of the sensor, and I'll show you just how wide the resulting image is. So you're definitely gonna have a lot on the left and right that's gonna be cropped off and lost with the final aspect ratio. But if you did wanna set your project to something much wider, like 2.66 to one, you could do that and still keep more of the image on the sides. All right, so let's just jump into Resolve and get started. I just opened up a new project in DaVinci Resolve, and the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the project settings. You can do that by hitting Shift-9. Now we need to set our timeline resolution. The first thing you need to do is decide what aspect ratio you're gonna shoot in and what resolution. And I just found this really great resource on the internet, this website called wearethefirehouse.com, and it's the aspect ratio cheat sheet. So for all the resolutions, you've got different aspect ratios and their corresponding resolutions. So we're looking for scope or 239. So you can see that here under cinema DCP 4K. And the corresponding resolution for that aspect ratio is 4096 by 1716. So really you can just choose which one you wanna work with, maybe experiment, see how they look on different monitors and what you prefer. I'm just gonna stick with the cinema DCP 4K at 4096 by 1716. So back here, I'm just gonna set this to custom and punch in 4096 by 1716. And I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna open that back up. You might be tempted to look at this next thing called pixel aspect ratio and change this to CinemaScope, but just leave this at square. We're gonna change the pixel aspect ratio on the footage itself. All right, so now I'm gonna jump over into the media tab and do that by hitting shift two, or obviously just click on this little button down here with your mouse. And I'm gonna find my footage. And I will grab, well, actually, let me just preview one of these here. In the preview window, you can see that our project settings here are in 239 to one aspect ratio, but our footage is only in a 16 by nine aspect ratio because this was shot on the Sony a7S III. So this footage needs to be de-squeezed. Highlight all these and just bring them down into the project. I'm not gonna change project frame rate. All these clips were shot at 60 frames per second. So I'm just gonna highlight them and hit Alt-A. Alt-A brings up your clip attributes. If you're on a Mac, I don't think there's a shortcut for that. So just right click and then find the clip attributes. And then I'm gonna set my video frame rate to 23.976. So it's gonna automatically slow, out, slow all of this down. The next thing here in the clip attributes is come down to the pixel aspect ratio. 
click this drop down and here are all the stretch factors that Resolve can deal with natively. I shot on 1.8 times anamorphic, so that's what I'm going to select. And I'm gonna hit okay, and boom. There, it stretched it out 1.8 times. I'm going to make a new timeline using all these clips. And I'm gonna open up this timeline just by double clicking it once it's done. And this pulls me over into the edit tab. The next thing we need to do here, go back into your project settings and then come down to the image scaling tab. And you have some options here for input scaling. Default is scale entire image to fit. So that's what we have it on now. So in order to get this footage to fill this aspect ratio, we just need to zoom in. So come over to your inspector. If it's not open, just click that inspector and just drag this up, I think to about 1.34 times. The annoying thing about doing it that way is that you're gonna have to do that for all of the clips. Another way you could do that is just to do it to the first clip and then hit Control C or Command C on a Mac. So that's gonna copy the settings and then we're gonna highlight everything else. And I'm going to deselect that first one. And then I'm gonna hit Alt B, the option B on a Mac. And that brings up the paste attributes box. So we can paste that attribute to all the clips here. So what I need to do is copy over the zoom, hit apply. And there we go. So that's one way to do it. Another thing to keep in mind here is we're gonna have a lot of extra real estate that basically got cropped off on the left and right side of the image. So you can basically reframe these if you need to. In the inspector, go to position and then just slide the X axis if you need to reframe. You can see we have a lot of extra stuff that got cropped off there. So that's one way we can do it. I'm gonna undo and show you another way. So going back into the project settings, go to image scaling, and then you can try center crop with no resizing. I'll show you what that does. This basically means Resolve didn't do anything to try to fit this into the aspect ratio that we selected. Therefore, you're gonna have to do the same thing, basically just zoom it in to fill up the frame. Another option would be scale full frame with crop. For this project, this actually works best because what it does is essentially just zoom it in like, like I did manually, but it just goes ahead and does it for the whole project. So you don't have to do copy the attributes or paste the settings in every clip. So they're already scaled up to fill the full frame. And you also still have the ability to drag this left and right to reframe the images if need be. So that's what I would recommend doing if you have the same kind of settings and camera and lens that I have. But just to show you the last option, is stretch frame to all corners. This one you'll see does not work for this footage. Resolve says that this is a good option for working with anamorphic footage, also mixed in with non-anamorphic footage. In this instance, it just stretches things out too much. So I'm just gonna pick scale full frame with crop. And that's pretty much that. If you have a lens that's supported natively by DaVinci Resolve, if you follow those steps, then you are good to go on your merry way. I hope that was helpful. If I messed anything up or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more Resolve tutorials, please let me know that as well. And also maybe tell me what it is you want to know. That would help. Okay, appreciate it. And see you in another video. My voice just gave out. Okay, I'm not doing it again. This is it. We're, we're done here. Okay. Bye. Wow. 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 Wow.